Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're back in the Honda Ridgeline, the 2010, that we just called an ABS module on for that uh, steering position sensor code software issue. Next day, owner calls me up, says he has two more lights on, check engine light and VTM4. So I'm like, no problem, I'll stop by, we'll scan it again. You know, no charge for now, just want to see if it's related to the ABS module. Um, and it wasn't. Right now we have in the engine uh, P0171 and a 174, bank 1 and bank 2, system 2 lean. Completely unrelated. So we're going to have to do a separate diagnosis on this. Uh, obviously it's going to be a separate charge if it is a different problem, which it looks like it will be. So, I dove right into the freeze frame. I want to recreate it as efficiently as possible. So, it looks like it's at idle. We are not going anywhere. I saw miles per hour was zero. I guess it was in the OEM freeze frame, but uh, trust me on that. And, let's see, air intake temp is 95. Long term fuel trims, very steady, but high on both banks over 20 percent short terms over 25 percent on both banks so definitely something wrong here and it's both banks so I'm thinking it's a fuel delivery issue right off the bat because two separate banks both running lean uh, that's you know kind of should be clear like we're not gonna have two oxygen sensors or uh, air fuel ratio sensors that fail at the same time or the other option is the mass airflow sensor not reporting enough air and uh, causing the mixture to be too lean and is trying to compensate. So let's fire this thing up. It's cold right now. Engine is cold. So let's get out of here. Let's go back. Go to our data. And we want to see um, well, let's go to powertrain, see if our fuel trims are in there. So in this case, the fuel trims, let's see if they're in this menu or not. They might be in a different menu. Oh, there it is, short-term fuel trim. See, it's 1.00. So that means that it's you know, zero, these two digits, think of that as a percent. So 1.25 would be 25%. So I guess we can look at that. Short term fuel trim bank two. Uh, where is our long term fuel trim? I'm actually almost tempted to go back into OBD2 data and read that data because it's more familiar and we don't have to like hunt around for it. Etc. So let's get out of here. Just for your information, here are the two codes. That's it in the engine menu. And in the VTM4, the reason that light is on is because the engine had a problem. And apparently, if the engine has a problem, VTM4 light comes on. It says power powertrain system failure. So that's very generic code. Nothing wrong with our four wheel drive, just the light is on. So, in order to get into OBD2, let's go exit out of here. And OBD2, diagnose. I don't want to start this car before I get data up on the screen. Okay. And current data. So, what do we want to monitor? Mass airflow, oxygen sensors, and fuel trims. Pretty, uh, pretty standard, and maybe RPMs. So customize the list, deselect all, let's see engine speed, we'll do throttle position, fuel system one. We don't need time since engine start. Uh, air intake temp, engine coolant temp, airflow rate and intake map and then our short-term and long-term trims 
That should be it. List view. So long term trim is at 18 and 17. Interesting. Let's uh, monitor our mass airflow. That's our key input parameter. And see where this thing goes. So it starts right up. It's an open loop. Once that goes into closed, we'll see our short-term trims react, hopefully. They're going high. 16. Car revs up just fine. I'm going to increase the throttle a little bit. They're climbing right now. I just want to pop the hood and check for vacuum leaks or something. I don't think we touched anything under there. Ooh, bingo. Check that out. Woo! That is freaking awesome. I'm almost as fast as Keith, right? Fantastic. Let's uh, tape that up with duct tape and verify the repair. All right, so pretty black duct tape sealing the hole in the air tube. Let's just make sure the fuel trims are proper. So key on, data. look at our fuel trims again Attack fuel system one engine speed throttle position those guys and short-term long-term trims okay let's focus on the airflow so these fuel trims should stabilize when we start the car So we're open loop. Closed loop. I'm gonna rev it up a little bit. Okay, so 5.8 grams per second. I would like to see these go down further. We might still have another air leak. That's not out of the question. Let's just double check. This pipe is it's actually really hot. Maybe it's the EGR. Hmm. Interesting. 4.5 grams per second right now. Let me put it under load.
still really high. Okay. Very interesting. The car seems to run okay. I don't like the fact that this pipe is really hot. It's really hot. Let's uh let's investigate a little further. Well I found some more holes over here. This thing is completely shot. I'm surprised it didn't set any more codes earlier. I'm not sure that would fix the problem. Just gonna do a little temporary. See if this makes any difference at all. On the scan data. No, still. Still high. Hmm. Well, maybe not as good as Keith. We taped up the entire air tube and our fuel trims are still going through the roof. We got 13% on the long term, 10% on the short term. That's like 20% combined. I don't I don't like that. Could be any flow through the EGR? Maybe. Do a little quick tap test. It's not like this car overnight had 10 different problems. Nope, no change. Four grams per second at idle, at hot idle. This should be more than that. Should we uh, pop the airflow sensor out and see if it's dirty? Uh, before we do that, I actually want to take it on a test drive just to see how it acts under load. See if the oxygen sensor is, you know, peg rich when you floor it. But, um, didn't nail it the first time here. All right, we're at idle. We took it around the block. Fuel trims, during acceleration, they were pretty close to zero. These were like plus seven. Uh, but at idle, it's, you know, it's significantly worse. Right now it's, you know, the short terms are around nine and 10%. And these are about 10%. So the air tube, yes, that was one problem for sure. Uh, I just want to clean this mass airflow to get a, a nice baseline reading of um, what it's supposed to be at idle. So the airflow, airflow rate right now is four grams per second in drive. If you put it in park, should drop a little lower than that. 3.9, see our fuel trims are. They're not terrible, I guess. So that wouldn't set a code. About 12. So total combined, it's close to 20%. Let's go clean that mass airflow sensor out. This is crazy, I'm just sitting here idle and they're climbing to like 20%. Is that normal? That's nuts. Mass airflow is at 3.8. Man, I just, I don't like that. Maybe it's normal for a Honda, I don't know. Let's rev it up again. So you're going a little negative. Long terms don't change. Look at these guys, they're gonna start climbing for apparently no reason. I mean, airflow rate's the same. Why are we going up here so fast on both banks? That is crazy to me. Look at that, 20%. It's, 
studies that he's out there. That's insane. So now it's just on its own. Dropping down. Both banks, mind you, so both systems are operational in, you know, bank one and bank two. All right, let's just clean the sensor out, get a good baseline. Well, I took out the mass airflow sensor. It's kind of a funky looking thing. So the air comes in here, and there are, let's see if you show these on camera, little resistors hiding right in that channel. You can see them from the back side right there. Very interesting. They all look perfectly clean, spick and span. So I'm not even going to worry about cleaning this thing. Um, it might be just Honda's strategy that the short terms go up and down that much. We did see that the long terms went down significantly. Now they're around like seven percent. You know, not not the greatest, but we started at well, like fifteen, almost twenty. So what we're gonna do is put the sensor back in, let the owner drive it. If the check engine light doesn't come back for a week, I'll charge him for the diag and the duct tape. Um, if it does, we'll you know if the check engine light does come back on for the lean codes, we'll diagnose it further. But for now, uh, that just might be the way the car is uh, programmed. So with that, thanks all for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Bonus footage, clear the codes. All right, sweet. Shouldn't be any code stored in here. Did I plug the mass airflow sensor back in? Let us see. <laughs> no, I did not have the mass airflow sensor plugged in. That is why you do the verification. Let's clear that out again. Key on. Continue. All right. Oh, damn it. Just want to make sure there's no, no more code stored in it. Let's see. Exit out of here. You gotta slow down to go fast, right? Trouble codes. No codes. Awesome. Now we go to data. <clears throat> Customize this guy. That's all we need. I'll throw these uh, EGR PIDs in there. Alright, so all the trims are reset. That That's a good thing to do. Now let's start up. Get our airflow rate up here. Open loop. Closed loop. Look at our short term trends. I like that a lot more. And raise the RPM a little bit. Okay, much better. I like it, 3%. So, yeah, uh, I think clearing the that all the diagnostic codes and data, in this case, is a very worthwhile thing to do. I mean, the car will eventually relearn, but just resetting all the trims, I mean, look, it's running freaking beautiful right now. Before it was like plus 10 and plus 20. Um, I'm just curious to drive it around the block real quick.
Short term trim is staying below 5%. I like that. Oh, quiet down, you beeper. Great power, no complaints. We've got single digits on the short term. Long term is still 0.000. I like it. five percent for awesome I like it so yeah basically this car is fixed I'm sure the check engine light won't come on for this problem unless the duct tape comes off or something but I'll give him a, like a one month guarantee on that uh, yeah little bonus footage there clear the trouble codes and uh, look at these fuel trims beautiful uh, I wish I had a cool saying like diagnosed and fixed it again uh, but I don't so see you guys next time bye bye